Last year, I made the college degree tier list, and this video absolutely blew up. But the most common comments I got on the video were, Shane, why didn't you include this major or that major? And there's actually over 900 different majors that you can graduate with in the United States. So of course I couldn't include all of them. But in this video, I am going to include a lot more. We're gonna be doing the top 50 most common majors and we're gonna be ranking them from S tier, which is the best, all the way down to F tier, which is the worst. If you're someone who's trying to choose the perfect college degree for you, or you just wanna get the most out of college with the least amount of time, effort, and money, or you're looking to get your first entry-level job right after graduating college, then check out my College 101 course down in the description below. This is basically my life work up to this point. It's without a doubt the best product that has to do with getting a good college degree. It's basically a very convenient, streamlined, step-by-step -step guide on answering all of your college-related questions. But anyways, let's get to ranking individual degrees. I'm not gonna spend very much time on each one of these because then the video is just gonna be way too long. Long. But let's go ahead and start off with accounting. This one is really good, extremely flexible. There's literally millions of different accounting jobs out there. So if you get into it and let's say you want to do tax, for instance, you decide you hate tax. Uh, there's so many different careers that you can pivot to. Accounting is S tier. Actuarial science, this one is very math heavy. Uh, really good one. I'd say the only problem with it is you can probably become an actuary just by getting a mathematics degree and then taking a few extra classes. But overall, when you look at the statistics, it's really good. I'm gonna go ahead and put that one in A tier. Agriculture, um, big issue with this one is it's one of those skills that you can't really learn in the classroom, in my opinion. You know, how the heck are you gonna learn how to be a farmer from in the classroom? That's just, that doesn't doesn't make any sense. Uh, this one goes into D tier. Animal science, uh, very similar issue uh, as the one before. Very, very bad statistics. If you look at the numbers on this one, it's gonna go into F tier. Anthropology, one of those subjects that is extremely interesting to a lot of people. Uh, you know, I think anthropology is great. Uh, unfortunately, very difficult to get a job in anthropology, especially with a bachelor's degree. Uh, to even have a chance, you pretty much have to get like a doctorate. Numbers are really horrible with this one. This one would fall under the category of one where if you are really passionate about anthropology, figure out a different way of making money from it. You know, do some kind of side hustle. This one goes into F tier. Architecture, another one, very interesting. Uh, also very difficult, surprisingly difficult. You know, when I was doing research on how hard they are, and you also surprisingly don't get very much out of it for how difficult it is. Now architecture students actually study more hours than any other type of student in college, even physics or engineering. So this is one that in my opinion, you could make it work, but it's gonna be very difficult. I'm gonna go ahead and put it into C tier. Next one on the list is biochemistry. And I think this is one of the better biological science degrees. A lot of the biological science degrees aren't that great. Uh, in my opinion, they're very overrated compared to the other STEM degrees. But uh, this one I'm gonna actually put into B tier. Biology is next, and even though it sounds very similar to biochemistry, this one is actually not nearly as good when it comes to the statistics and your ability to get a job with just a bachelor's. So this one is gonna go into C tier. Next one on the list is going to be business administration. And uh, business administration is a business degree, so there are a lot of positives there because business degrees in general are pretty good. However, I'd say it's one of the less good business degrees. Still, if you look at the statistics, it's okay. I'm gonna go ahead and put it in low B tier. Next on the list is going to be chemistry. This is a physical science and uh, better than biology, not as good as biochemistry. I'm gonna go ahead and put this one in low B tier. All right, so communications degree is next. And this is one of those degrees where it falls under the category of a very valuable skill. It's just learning it in school isn't going to help you all that much. And it tends to be just too general. Like, you know, everybody communicates just like everybody breathes. When business owners, hiring managers, recruiters are looking for people who can actually help companies, they want you to have specialized skills, not just general skills. So communications is going to go into C tier. Next one on the list is computer science S tier. This needs no explanation. Next one on the list is criminal justice. And this is one of those degrees where, you know, a lot of people think they're going to get a criminal justice degree and then go into some sort of law enforcement, either becoming a police officer 
or a detective, like someone that you'd see on CSI. However, what most people don't realize is you don't actually need a criminal justice degree in order to get a job in law enforcement. However, it might help you in some rare occasions in certain states or certain districts and with certain careers. So for that reason, the statistics are not great on this one, but I'm gonna go ahead and put it into D tier. Criminology is basically just a worse version of criminal justice. Uh, the statistics are even worse with that one, so I'm gonna put that one in F tier. Economics is next on the list. It fits in very similarly to the business degrees. However, it's a little bit harder for you to get your first job right after college, and it's not quite as flexible. A lot of the time with economics degrees, the career progression that you see is, you know, it's very difficult at the beginning, but once you have some years of experience under your belt, you can actually make a lot of money. It's also relatively flexible, teaches you a lot of skills that are valuable in life, and it might help you to become an entrepreneur later on. So this one is gonna go into a tier. Next on the list is education, and unfortunately, teachers don't get paid all that well. The one positive to education is if you do get an education degree, you are very likely going to get a job pretty much no matter what. Education degrees have some of the lowest unemployment percentages, but a lot of the other stuff involved, like job satisfaction and everything else like that, like how well you can progress up the career, and a lot of other metrics that are important when it comes to evaluating these college degrees are bad. So so education is gonna go into C tier. Engineering is next on the list, and this one has fantastic uh, statistics across the board. Pretty much any type of engineering degree is gonna be relatively good. If I put all of the engineering degrees on this list, it would be like 20 different ones, so you're just gonna have to watch another video if you wanna see me uh, rank them individually. You know, engineering is extremely high paying, uh, pretty flexible, has decent job satisfaction. Um, there's just a lot of positives to engineering. I'd say one of the negatives to it is it's extremely difficult, right? It's gonna be some of the most challenging years of your life. A lot of people don't end up finishing in four years. Sometimes it takes them five or even six years just to get a bachelor's. So that is something you wanna keep in mind, but overall engineering is S tier. Next on the list is going to be English. And this is one where I think it does teach you some valuable things because it's almost like communication where you are gonna learn some good soft skills, right? formulating an argument, writing essays, kind of organizing your thoughts, delivering uh, whatever your argument is. Um, so, you know, English does have some positives, but overall the statistics just aren't great on this one. So it is gonna go into D tier. Next on the list is exercise science. And this one actually has some of the worst statistics on the entire list. And I think the reason for this is because most people go into exercise science because they want to become personal trainers. The only problem with that is most personal trainers don't actually need a degree. The biggest thing when it comes to personal training is motivating people to work out and then basically just knowing the basics. Now, I'm not saying that's right. Maybe people should know more about, you know, working out. That would probably prevent a lot of injuries, but that is the way that it is, right? So exercise science goes into D tier. Next on the list is finance. And I see this one pretty similar to accounting. It's less flexible than accounting is. Um, however, you can, if you are a very hard worker, move up to higher positions, right? Finance is one of those degrees where it's high risk, high reward, and it's very similar to a law degree, for instance, where, you know, people who are, you know, the top like 5% or even 1% of the people who, you know, do finance or law are going to make really, really good money. But if you're not in the top 5 or 1%, it's probably not gonna be as good as something that's a little more flexible. But overall, for the right person, finance is fantastic. I'm gonna put this one into S tier. Next on the list is food science. And this one, uh, kind of interesting. Um, the statistics here are decent. They're not horrible by any means. I mean, there are a lot of jobs out there. You could work for Coca-Cola, for instance, or any number of other food companies. It's just also not amazing. So I'm going to go ahead and put this one into C tier. Next on the list is going to be forestry. And uh, this one, when it comes to the statistics, again, not amazing it's gonna go into D tier. Next on the list is a general business degree. And although it's probably one of the worst business degrees, when you look at the statistics, it's still okay. And the fact that most of the business degrees are just good in general, they're extremely flexible, makes this one pretty decent. It's gonna go into low B tier. Next on the list is going to be general studies. And I'm sorry, but this one is just an absolute joke, right? Like you go to college to learn specific skills, to get educated in specific areas. Areas. General studies is just like sampling everything. If you want to sample everything, 
use Google. I mean, there's so much free content out there on the internet. You could almost argue that even the specialized content right now is better free on Google or for a very low price than it is in college. So there's absolutely no need whatsoever for you to pay money to learn just general content like this that you can just find anywhere on the internet. All right, this is like Wikipedia studies or something. It's just ridiculous. This one goes into F tier. Geology, uh, this is a science degree, scores relatively well when it comes to the statistics. A lot of the time people get geology degrees and they go into the natural gas industry and that can you know fluctuate somewhat. We've seen you know with the pandemic and everything, uh, uh, the natural gas industry got absolutely rocked. So that is something you want to look at. Right now, it's probably not that great, but hopefully uh, past uh, the uh, pandemic, um, geologists will be able to uh, find more jobs. And so this one's going to go into B tier. Next on the list is going to be history. Uh, one of my favorite subjects. Now, one thing I will say about history is when you look at the statistics, it's not horrible. I think that a lot of smart, ambitious people tend to take history and philosophy, and that's probably why they end up doing better later on in life and it probably doesn't have too much to do with the uh, history course itself but you could make an argument that i'm wrong there totally open to that but overall this one goes into c tier next on the list is going to be human resources and this is one of the business degrees that again isn't amazing however business degrees in general are pretty good overall so this one is gonna go into low B tier as well. Next on the list is information technology management, and there's like five different degrees that are very similar names there, and they all score relatively well when you look at the statistics. I'd say the one downside to some of these technology-related degrees is sometimes there are alternative routes in order to get your degree, right? So sometimes you can just do a certification or something along those lines in order to get your you know, foot in the door. And so you really wanna do your research because in some cases, is a degree isn't necessary. But overall, when you look at the statistics, this one goes into S tier. Next one on the list is going to be interdisciplinary studies and another one that's pretty similar to like general studies. I mean, what do I even need to say anything about this? F tier. If you are gonna spend $80,000 on a college degree, go $40,000 in debt on average, you need to make sure that you learn specific skills that are employable. Next one on the list is gonna be international business. And this is one that kind of surprised me. It did really well when it comes to the statistics. Um, I would say this one is pretty much like high B tier. Actually, I'm gonna put this one into A tier. It's pretty good. A very similar sounding one is international relations. And this one doesn't score as well, not even close, right? So this one actually goes into D tier. That's why it's really important for you to do your research. Don't go into something just because it sounds good. Next on the list is going to be journalism. And this is one where you do learn skills that are valuable. There's a lot of journalists out there. However, it is pretty saturated. A lot of people want this job. It is an attractive job to get into the news business. And so for that reason, it's going to go into low C tier. Next one is a liberal arts major. Yes, that is a major. It's just it's not just a type of degree. And it's basically a general studies degree of liberal arts. So I think you probably know where I'm going to put this. F tier. Next one is management information systems. Uh, this is a great combination of technology skills and business skills. I think this one is going to be even better in the future. I'm very bullish on, on this degree. I think it's a great degree. Um, and so this one is definitely going to go into S tier. Next on the list is going to be marketing. This is a business degree. Traditionally, probably one of the better degrees out there. I do think that lately it has gotten a little bit saturated. But with that being said, marketing is is going to squeak into A tier. Next on the list is mathematics degree, and this is one where it's extremely difficult, one of the hardest degrees out there, However, it doesn't have as much upside as an engineering degree, for instance. But it can still be a really solid option if you're someone who's really passionate about math. You might wanna supplement it with some other skills that are a little more easily you know, integrated into the real world, something that a hiring manager, business owner uh, would want you to have. But overall, mathematics is gonna go into A tier. Neuroscience is next on the list. Uh, this is one that has relatively decent stats. Um, again, it's one of those science degrees that is probably 
pretty disappointing compared to where you think it would land. Um, this one actually goes into C tier. Next one is philosophy. And this is one of those degrees, I, I said it a few minutes ago. Basically it has relatively decent stats, but I think it has a little bit more to do with correlation than causation, but I could be wrong about that. Um, this one goes into C tier. I think one of the reasons that it has such a good statistics, for instance, is a lot of philosophy majors and history majors end up becoming lawyers. And of course, if they get a master's, you know, or a doctorate level degree in the case of lawyer, they're gonna get paid more. Next on the list is going to be a physics degree, very closely related to mathematics. Um, I would say this is actually the hardest degree on the list and it still doesn't have the upside of an engineering degree. You know, you pretty much have to be a genius to do a physics degree. Um, but with that being said, if you can do it, more power to you. This one is pretty decent. It's gonna go into A tier. Next on the list is going to be political science. This is one where I do think it has some upside kind of a dark horse candidate, uh, kind of like finance where some of the, you know, top 1% or top 5% people who graduate with this degree might actually get in positions that are really good. But I just don't think it has the same upside as a finance degree, for instance. So for that reason, I'm going to go ahead and put political science into C tier, I'd say strong C tier, almost B tier. Next is going to be psychology. And this is a degree that's just extremely saturated. I believe this is the most popular degree, like the most amount of people graduate with this degree out of all the different majors out there. Very, very saturated, extremely hard for you to get a job at a bachelor's level. Also very interesting. I understand why so many people like it. Uh, but with that being said, when it comes to the statistics, this one is gonna go into D tier. I would say pretty strong D tier. And if you know what you're getting yourself into, you know that you're gonna get a doctorate. Um, you know, I'd say I'd move it up to like maybe a C or a B tier. But a lot of people do not know what they're getting themselves into. Uh, and in my opinion, it's one of the most overrated degrees. Next on the list is going to be recreation and leisure studies. The statistics here are awful, as you can imagine. Um, I mean, unless you can work for some type of, you know, parks and rec uh, type crew, then uh, you're probably not going to be able to get a job doing recreation and leisure studies. So this one goes into F tier. Sales slash business marketing is a business degree, a little bit less well known than marketing, but still has pretty good statistics. And so for that reason, this one is going to just barely squeak into A tier. Next one on the list is going to be sociology. This is a uh, social science degree. Uh, again, very interesting stuff, uh, but when it comes to the statistics, it's just not that great. I'm going to go ahead and put this one into D tier. Speaking of statistics, statistics. Um, this is a really great degree. Um, actually, out of statistics, physics, and mathematics, I almost want to put this one into S tier because the, uh, the stats are pretty good for this. I think I'm going to just barely squeak this one into S tier. I could change my mind tomorrow on this one because it is honestly pretty close, but I, I think I'm going to put statistics into S tier but like very low S tier. It's just very practical and useful in the real world, whereas mathematics and physics can sometimes be not as practical and more theoretical. Next on the list is going to be supply chain management. Uh, this is a business degree, of course, and uh, I'm gonna give this one strong A tier status almost S tier. And then the last one is going to be theology slash religious studies. And this is one I've talked about before. You know, most preachers out there don't have theology or religious studies degrees. You know, they just study it on their own and they go to church growing up and then they become preachers naturally, right? So you definitely don't need to get one of these degrees. I think it's hilarious. I did an entire video on this and I was doing research and all of those television preachers that make like $10 million a year, Pretty much none of them have religious studies or theology degrees. However, almost all of them have their own schools, which they charge, you know, good tuition money for teaching people religious study and theology. So, I mean, I'm just going to leave it at that. Um, I do think that if you get this degree, um, if you were already going to be a preacher, it, you know, it's going to set you back a little bit, but you know, not horrible. You can definitely make good money as a preacher, as you see with the, the ones who make like $10 million a year. I just think that you could very easily do the same thing without this degree. You truly do not need it. And so for that reason, it is gonna go into F tier. Before you leave, check out my other videos right here. I made them just for you. And go ahead, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, ring the notification bell, comment down below any thoughts, comments, criticisms, etc. that you have on the video. And I'll see you in the next one.